Welcome to another episode of Listen to Us Rant About Movies. I'm Wes Ford. And I'm Zach Harris. We rant about movies and drink while we do it. On this episode, we'll be discussing what we've been watching, including our forced films, followed by review rants on Dan Gilroy's Velvet Buzzsaw and Steven Soderbergh's High Flying Bird. Tonight, we are drinking The Blushing Monk by Founders. Yes, it is a Belgian-style ale fermented with pure raspberries. It smells nice. Yeah, it doesn't look like a beer. It's very red. Looks it's like, like a, a pinkish. Juice. It's a pinkish red. Yeah, almost looks like a lambic. Yeah. And it is 9.2%. Strong boy. Getting toasty tonight. Let's give it a little sip. Let's get a sip going. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. Whew. Man. Doesn't taste like beer. <laughs> no, it absolutely does not. It's good, though. I don't dislike it. But, like... Oh, yeah. I, I feel like I could drink, like, a quarter of this. Like, this is something I would drink in, like, a tiny glass. <laughs> yeah, okay. it's... You can't like be chugging like a six pack of those, like I no, you know, it's, it hits you in the back of the throat, like on your jaw. You know, it's like real tart. Mm-hmm. It's tart. I like tart it, though. It has some sweetness to it too. Absolutely, yeah. It's tasty. It's, it's thick. You can tell it's uh Sometimes that percentage is like what? There's no. But the thickness, I feel like it's got a it's got a high alcohol viscosity. Yeah, but it doesn't necessarily taste like alcohol. No. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm talking strictly viscosity here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good, though. Yeah, I'm in. Let's get ripped. Nice. I love it. All right. Uh, before we get into what we've been watching, we'd like to remind you that this podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash L-T-U-R-A-M. Choose from 180,000 titles from your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. And if you like what you hear on this episode, remember you can find other episodes of our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, and YouTube. All right, let's get into it. We are going to talk about... Yeah, we're going to talk about what we've been watching. Zach, you want to kick it off? Um, hmm, what is a good one? Well, I've been, um, been coming back on the Zatoichi series, uh, so I'm four in on Zatoichi. Hmm. Zatoichi. Um, and, uh, it's a great series. Have you ever seen any of these? Blind I don't Samurai? believe I have. No. They're beautiful. The Criterion put out the, like, giant box set or whatever, like, three years ago maybe Mm. and right after i got it i think i watched six and then i didn't watch any more of them um Mm. which it's like man i only watched six but you think of like any other franchise and it's like well that's the series (laughs) you know what i mean yeah so this is 27 movies uh so i'm four in we were gonna try to do it all in february but i don't think that's gonna happen being that there's 23 (laughs) more of them um but yeah, they're fun. They're really good. Nice. What's it about? It's a blind samurai. So okay. it's like that wander. Cool. Basically, like each. So there's some through line characters, um, but for the most part, it's like him wandering upon a new town. You know, quarreling with the yakuza a bit, showing off that he's a huge champion, and then breaking a heart or two and leaving town. 
<laughs> yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. but it's really fun, and it like it plays on like the tropes a little bit, and sometimes they switch mm. them up, and sometimes it's just like it's fun. The like because it is formulaic to an extent, but yeah, I feel like when it's that high volume, it becomes like oh, is that Zadowichi's definitely going to do this right now, or you know what I mean? <laughs> That's cool. It, it sounds really fun. Um, I can't believe there's so many of them. Yeah, it's insane, and they're all the same actor too. Wow, that's great. Yeah, because they would all come out. They would come out like two a year or something. They were just cranking them out. Wow, that's awesome. Very cool. Well, um, lately I've been watching True Detective season three. I have as well. Nice. What are you thinking so far? Um, are you caught up? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm like I'm I'm waiting, but I'm not. I'm, it's like I think they can pull it off and it'll be good, but on the other hand, it's like, what's that worth when the majority of it I'm not like crazy about, but I still like. You know, mm. does that make sense? Yeah. I don't know. What are I, you thinking? I, I'm really I'm enjoying it. Um, I think there are some episodes that feel really drawn out. Mm-hmm. And I feel like since there's only like two episodes left, they're gonna drop something big that they've been holding out on you know yeah totally um because i i don't really know how they're gonna wrap it up without like some obvious thing they've just held back you know yeah i don't either um but i the last episode was pretty good like it it, it dropped some more stuff and it was like whoa Mm -hmm. um and the acting's really good yeah i like uh really good i like steven dorf old man yeah. especially old man steven dorf i mean uh, yeah that scene with them um, old, being old and just like talking mm-hmm. to each other was yeah. very impressive that's very yeah. good acting totally and their makeup is so good the makeup is very good more so on uh Mershala, but yeah more on mashallah mahershala mahershala i don't know what i'm doing yeah mahershala ali um he's good in it um yeah, way better than season two. I couldn't even finish that one. Yeah, season two was a big piece of shit. Um, I think everyone agrees on that. <laughs> I do appreciate, though, and I don't necessarily knock the new one for it, but I do think that going in a different direction was interesting. I do think this is like very much harkening back more Definitely. specifically to the first season. Definitely. Um, I guess, yeah, my main thing is like, I just hope the information they're withholding brings out something that adds more to like the rest of what happened because i i just feel like they keep talking about this certain stuff that happened or like you know what we're responsible for like you know what we did and the whole time it's been these like vague events that i'm just like okay i just like and not even necessarily like the mystery is like really working on me. I'm like, I just like want to know what the fuck they're talking about. You know what yeah. I mean? Like sometimes they're just like sitting around talking about these things and it feels like so deliberate that it's withholding yeah. it. I'm like, I just like don't even know what's happening because I don't know what's being referenced. You know what I mean? I agree. I agree. No, that's a good criticism. And I think, yeah, there's a lot of times where I'm just like, I'm not even sure what they're talking about right now. Like I, I literally yeah. like, I have no, am I, am I lost? Like, did I miss something? Like, yeah, but I don't think I don't think because I felt the same way, and I don't think I did. I think it's just that like yeah. they're talking about these things that like you're gonna find out, and, and they're being very like, obscure. Yeah, and it seems like that's what they're leaning on to like drive the mystery is like yeah. bringing these things up. When really, without that, I don't know like how compelling the mystery is. You know? What yeah. I mean? Well. Well. Yeah. I mean, I hope it pays off. You know? Like, yeah, I do too. It'd be a really big bummer if it was just like, oh, you know, it's like not that surprising or it's just mm-hmm. like a big letdown. Um, it just seemed like with the the strength of the first season was that whatever it was, it was just like what it was. I didn't feel right. like there was as much of like, like the mystery was the character was just so good in the first one. That the characters like, are good. And there was payoff every episode, not even in a sense of, like, giving you info to the mystery, but, like, things were happening that were, like, intriguing and, like, crazy that whatever they ended up facing was just, like, what it would be. Does that make sense? Yeah. And the style was just really good, too. Yeah. There's a lot about the style. The tone. Definitely Mm -hmm. the tone. 
Um, I think this one has a pretty good tone as well, but I, yeah. what I think what I really like about it the most, I think is the, um, I, I like the jumping through time thing. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's kind of cool. And I think they're doing that well. So. Yeah. They're definitely playing with it a lot more than they have with yeah mm. previous ones. So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing where that, where that ends. Yeah, I am too. I'm, I'm you know, I'm rooting for it. Yeah. And they're strong. <laughs> what else have you been watching? Um, let me take a look here. Sorry. I counted last night and I think I watched 35 movies since our last podcast. Holy shit, man. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty crazy. Um I watched a movie called Fraud. That was a pretty interesting watch. Um directed by Dean Fleischerkamp, who had done some um like web series and stuff that I liked. He did one um, called Catherine with Jenny Slate. And then he did one called David's Story of David with Nathan Fielder that were mm. pretty good. And this is, um, it's pretty short. It's like an hour long. Um, and it's comprised entirely of like family home videos and YouTube clips. So it's like they're, some person had uploaded like some insane volume of their family videos of just like everything that they would do basically it's like mm. us going to the park us going to i don't know wendy's us like in a van you know what i mean yeah. so yeah. he takes this footage and like reappropriates it into like them like doing some crazy shit and it's pretty interesting i wouldn't say it's huh. like entirely successful but i think it's a really cool and experiment like new, new idea yeah totally it's a it's an interesting experiment and hmm. it is entertaining um but yeah it had been i played at some festival i can't remember um that i i think i had a potential to go see it or so it it played around and then just was gone for like two hmm. years and then all of a sudden it popped up on amazon so it just pounced on me you know but yeah it's it's worth a watch for sure it's we're short. checking out yeah, I'd say so. It's interesting. Sounds cool. It's on Amazon, huh? Mm-hmm. Fraud. Cool. I'm going to check it out. Uh, I watched another series. Um, been into... The wife and I are really into, like, true crime stuff. Yeah. That's, like, our thing. We always watch true crime things. And uh, we watched The Conversation with a Killer, the Ted Bundy tapes. It's a long oh, title, yeah. but... It's kind of a, it's it's popular on the internet right now, but um, I thought it was, I thought it was, I thought it was pretty good. Definitely worth a watch. It's like if you are into serial killers, mm-hmm. as odd as that sounds, um, <laughs> if you find them interesting, I think it's it's definitely worth a watch. Ted Bundy was a messed up guy, and uh, it, it's just it's it's nuts to to the fact like he kept escaping jail spoiler alert this is true real life (laughs) yeah he kept he kept escaping jail and like no one like for so long everyone was just like look at the guy he he can't kill anyone like he doesn't Mm -hmm. look like a killer it's not him and they let him go or he escaped and he kept killing and it's like it's it's just crazy and he was like the first like famous serial killer Mm -hmm. uh back in like the seven it was it lasted from I think starting in the, the late 60s all the way to the late 80s where he was killing all across the United States. And um, just to see that whole progression is really fascinating. Totally. And and it's called the Ted Bundy tapes because it's basically near the end of his life. a um, An investigator or a reporter, I should say came to him and like was able to have interviews with him Mm. and the only way he could get him to talk about what happened is he said how about you narrate what what happened to ted bundy like you you tell me from a outside perspective you narrate what happened to him and so so he like tells the story third person or whatever it yeah it opened ted bundy up because it was it allowed him to like tell his story and kind of, and this is where it's kind of uh, lacking in my opinion, and maybe a morally a little wrong or a little gray. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are angry about this fact is that yeah. 
he does narrate his own story and so it may be a little biased parts of it may not yeah. be true he like perpetuates him being like a myth and like this yeah. this this legendary figure you know he propels mm-hmm. that myth so you don't there's some truth missing but yeah. i got throughout the whole time i i understood like yeah this guy's crazy like i'm not really taking what he's saying seriously like yeah you can tell on the tapes that he's like trying to make himself seem like yeah like this more heroic figure it's really i don't know it's really interesting and if you're into serial killers if you like documentaries um definitely worth a watch it's like nice five or six episodes or an hour long it's not that bad it's It's quick and easy pretty quick and easy and i'm assuming this is going to be first part of a series hence the conversation with the killer yeah colon the ted bundy tapes <laughs> um but i also wanted to like definitely catch it because uh i'm curious about the ted bundy movie coming out <laughs> oh yeah Which, i haven't seen the trailer for that i haven't either I, I don't know if there is one but i think i saw that one came out maybe i wrong. i know there's like images official images but um no now i like now i understand all about ted bundy i didn't know like a lot about him to be honest mm-hmm. before this so I don't know. It was, it was definitely fascinating. Definitely worth a watch. Nice. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's on That's Netflix. Nef- yeah, Netflix, right? Yeah. Cool, cool. All right. What else? What else? I watched um, The Adventures of Prince Ahmed, which is uh, one of the earliest animated films ever, I believe. Wow. Uh, f- features, at least. Um, cool. Directed by Lotte Reinger, a German animator, who I think she spent three years animating it, which is insane. Wow. And it's, it's all um, shadow puppets, like paper, like 2D puppets animated, and then huh. color tinted. And it is incredible. It was so cool. Really? Uh, just pretty, pretty mind-blowing. It's like... This movie was made in 1926. Like, it is insane. (laughs) You know? Um, And I saw it at the music box. They had it on 35, and they had a guy doing, like, a live organ score, which was really fun. Um, That's cool. It was just a good experience, you know? It's nice and short, too. Another movie that's, like, a little over an hour long, like 60-some minutes. Um, They were short back in those days. Yeah, totally. And, I mean, you know, for that, it's like, Jesus Christ. But definitely had some uh, questionable moments in terms of depictions of, uh, you know, race or gender. But I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, seriously, like, technically incredible. Like, pretty, pretty mind blowing. I would definitely it's, recommend checking it out. It's really cool. I don't know how I would see it, nor do I don't think I'd ever have the experience you had. But. Yeah, it's still so worth cool watching though. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if it's maybe there's a collection of her stuff. Um, whatever. I don't know why I'm looking it up right now. <laughs> like Lottie Ranger <laughs> Blu-ray. It's like this. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but oh, it is out on Blu-ray. <laughs> Crazy. On Amazon, twenty four dollars. Prince Amen. I picked that shit up. Yeah, very good. Very impressive animation. Very cool, man. Um, I got one more for us. I went to the theaters and saw Lego Movie 2, the second part. Nice. How was that? <laughs> it was good. It was a fun experience. Um, did you ever see the first one? I did. I liked it. Yeah. I think I liked the first one a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Uh, just because I don't really want to spoil it, but there's a reveal at the end, and that's like, whoa you know like that's that's one of the best parts of the movie you know is that reveal the second part is you know the the reality of the situation you know that reveal and it can Mm -hmm. it it picks up right off where the first one left off and uh i think knowing that thing that i'm talking about Mm -hmm. it kind of uh i don't know it lessens the charm a little bit for me yeah um but that being said, it still like has that relentless pace of the first one. Mm-hmm. Very funny. Uh, nice. You know, we were in a we were in a theater with adults and kids, 
Mm-hmm. And I'd say it was like more adult jokes than kid jokes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's a there's a lot of adult humor in it. I found that very enjoyable. We were laughing our asses off. We were like the loudest ones in that theater. And um and the animation is just so cool. Animation. You know, the animation's good, yeah. so fun to watch. And it's it's you know, they've taken that technology from the first one and there's other Lego movies too, but uh they it's it's improved. It looks better. It looks way better. Um, nice. and it just the little details like they literally look like Lego pieces. Yeah. And so having the wear on them and like the plastic the wear, and stuff. There's like you can see fingerprints on the pieces. Mm-hmm. You know, like very detailed. It's so cool. Like so that alone it's it's worth watching. Like I like good animation movies and this is it's a good really good animation so hell yeah um i'd say you don't necessarily just go see in theaters we we were excited to see it but definitely we'll check it out when it comes out you know if it's probably going to be on hbo yeah. or something. i will that'll be a beautiful movie on hbo just like ooh, like yes. a movie too mm. <laughs> definitely <laughs> so yeah i enjoyed it i also think um I, th- I feel like they did weigh a little bit too much on the Batman character, Will Arnett's Batman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I They're kind of making it a little too much. It's like, okay, you know. Yeah, we get that you guys got Batman. All right. Yeah. Had um, his own movie. Let's all chill out. <laughs> yeah, he had his own movie, which I, I that's my favorite out of Lego movies. Mm-hmm. Did you ever see that one? No, I haven't seen that. I should that, one's the, my, that, that one's the best, in my opinion. It's mm. so good. Nice. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, and I love Batman too, so it's yeah. really great for that. Pays homage to like every Batman. It's great. Anyway, mm-hmm. um, yeah, Lego Movie Two, very funny, very enjoyable. Check it out. Hell yeah. Well, continuing the um animation train here, very nice. different animated movie. I watched um Cleopatra, which was the second in uh the uh anime rama series which is like a erotic anime from japan from uh the 70s <laughs> this the third of which Amazing. is um belladon of sadness which is the one that's gotten like the biggest release out of all of them i've heard of that one um but they just released a set of this of cleopatra and thousand and one nights which i started watching last night and fell asleep during but um directed by aichi yamamoto and um, I definitely enjoyed it. I think there's definitely 100% some, like, you know, shit in there that's not good. But, uh, yeah. you know, like the <laughs> others, some things don't age well. And uh, <laughs> But that being said, uh, a lot of it was, it was like, very entertaining. More entertaining than Belladonna of Sadness, I would say. Um, mm. Real zany, different Belladonna of Sadness had kind of, like, a watercolor-ish... More of like, uh, I guess you would refer like traditionally French, like aesthetic to it. Um, yeah. And also made use of a lot of um, like still frame, like using just hand drawn paintings. As that's hmm. it, and like moving around them. Um, so since this was earlier, I was expecting this to be even more stripped down. But I would say it's like very fully animated, and um, that was a big surprise. Uh, the character hmm. designs are a little. Um, more cartoonish and like i guess like uh, like disney style you know what i mean yeah um which is weird when they're naked (laughs) but uh (laughs) but not not terrible uh (laughs) it's also not like you know like just like cartoons of people fucking but uh i don't know it's it's kind of a weird grab bag of styles too there's you know weird scenes that are just completely different styles of animation that are like Hmm. really abstract and uh i don't know it's really an oddity but i was pretty entertained by it and uh animation was really impressive it was cool very interesting cool cool real quick um, yeah one more i'll talk about very briefly okay i finally got around to watching i'd been really waiting a long time the mummy with tom cruise uh i saw that, you saw that. <laughs> i had an opportunity where i almost i almost watched that on hbo because i was like yeah. what should i watch i saw it i i didn't do it <laughs> yeah good it's really bad like oh, picture man. what you think how bad you think it would be 
and like minus two stars from how bad you think it would be. Oh like it's my God. very, very bad to the point where I was watching it with my roommate, John, and we were just like, what is even happening? Like, I don't like, what are they, what's going on in this? I don't know what's happening. Um, they sell the dark universe so hard in it. Like, it really it's all, hard. It's okay. all failed. It's yeah, all done. The, the opening. <laughs> okay. So it starts universal logo, right? Goes through the whole universal animation and then goes, does the dark universe. Right? Zoom, and like spins around the globe and then dark universe and CG like, dun, 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 like zooms in. It's like, Oh my God. Like oh, there was like a full minute dark universe animation to start this movie. <laughs> It's never gonna happen. Like, gonna like happen. in ten years, if someone watches this, they're like, "What the fuck is the dark universe?" You know? <laughs> so stupid. Did not know any other monsters were in the movie. There spoiler, are. Spoiler alert. Do you want to know? I guess anyone who doesn't want to listen can skip ahead. But yeah, I guess I, I guess I do. Okay, so Russell and Crow. Russell and Crow. Russell, Russell Crow <laughs> is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, like in the movie for like no I've seen reason. The, oh my god. So I've seen the cast photo. Yeah. Of, there's like a cast photo that exists yeah. like So is not all of them. No one up, no right? one else. Just him. Okay. Okay. But they also they like there's they're a trying to tie like, it in. They're walking through this room, like, look at all these like things in jars, and it's just like when like a shot of the creature from the black lagoons like arm in a jar. And just oh literally a shot of it going like dolling past. It's like, oh real subtle guys, Jesus. But uh <laughs> But yeah, Russell Crowe just like is becomes Mr. Hyde and like has to like inject him. He's like just like when he's talking to Tom Cruise about a mummy it's just like what the fuck am i watching like why is he in this and he's just like i gotta give you advice you know you really shouldn't uh, and then it's like stabbing himself with these injections it's like oh Oh my my god God. it is fucking brutal bud next time you get home and you're just like sloshed i feel like that's a good drunk movie (laughs) yeah (laughs) totally it's a great drunk movie get a couple buds you know yeah that's Get awesome. And watch the mummy. I don't regret watching it, but it is a horrible piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I've heard, man. That's why I like haven't done it. Um, it's it's surprising because it's Tom Cruise, and he usually won't yeah. allow a project like that, you know, happen. You know, it's unbelievable, and it's also, I don't want this mummy to be sexy, and it's not in the movie, but it's just like they're trying to sex up the mummy so uh, much just like her like licking tom cruise's face and her like cheek is rotted away she's like oh <laughs> you know what i mean she's <laughs> yeah. like she's like naked like wrapped in like like pieces of like you know mummy like gauze and it's just like covering her boobs she's like half like you know oh my like god decomposed it's brutal so does he does he not like become the mummy himself um fuck what happens I think he does become, he becomes some fucking mummy thing, and then because he's got to be like continuing in the universe, right? Like... Oh yeah, like he's definitely gonna be a character. I guess he is the mummy. I don't remember exactly what happens. I just remember being so checked out by the oh, end. Oh yeah, but I will say <laughs> probably not even like fully watching at that yeah. point. <laughs> Another spoiler alert, if you care to hear that, I was I was just blown away by. <laughs> sure was. Jake Johnson is in this movie, right? Wow. Okay. Dies within like 10 minutes and then is like a zombie that no one can see that gives Tom Cruise advice throughout the movie. Like Tom Cruise will look over and he's just like, hey buddy, over here. He's just like dressed up as a zombie. He's like, this way. (laughs) Yeah. It's unbelievable. That is so bad. It is unbelievable. That's so bad <laughs> yeah it's it really bad. horrible and they really also try and tom cruise is like trying to like flex his comedy muscles and be like a brendan oh Fraser god type. Insane. <laughs> all right and very last thing is that they in the scene with russell crowe they bring out this book and they're like yeah the mummy blah 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 like it was all written in this book they throw the book on the table the exact same book from the brendan Fraser mummy and it's like cross are they trying to put retroactively put the old mummies in the dark universe it could happen 
<laughs> it can happen. Like you leave it alone. You can't say those are in the dark universe, you fuckers. Like no way. Stupid. So stupid. Trying to up the count. They're pulling a DC. It's like up the count. Many movies as possible. Get them all out yeah. there. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Just like trying to pull like a Batman vs Superman. Look, this movie. We gotta somehow connect the whole universe in this one movie. We gotta get it done now! <laughs> <laughs> we want the universe out now. <laughs> Marvel is way ahead! <laughs> it's like there's a solution. You know Just don't be that and you're fine, you know? Yeah. You know, it kind of sucks too because, like, yeah, it's it obviously is really bad, but, like, I don't know. I like the classic monsters. It'd be cool oh, yeah. if they, like, did it in a smart way to, like, have it actually play out in, like, a the dark universe actually be a thing Mm -hmm. that'd be cool yeah it's like it doesn't it doesn't need to be it's literally feels like a mummy mission impossible movie oh my god but bad it's just like it feels like a superhero movie and it doesn't feel like a horror movie it's like if Mm -hmm. you like what is is like frankenstein gonna be like surfing on a giant wave (laughs) you know like like what is gonna happen in this you know what i mean yeah why does it have to be a superhero movie? Like, make it yeah. a good movie alone, and then I would watch... have a little. If you have to have a little thing after the credits, done. Yeah, you know. It, but it has to be. They have to be standalone, very good independent films first. Like, yeah, I think we've learned this now globally on like how extended cinematic universes work. Do what Marvel's doing. Yeah. Everyone's like, we got to be like Marvel. Just make as many as we can. And it's just like, <laughs> no, but like, you realize that they actually, like, even if you hate Marvel, you got to give them credit. And I'm honestly annoyed when I see these things, but it's like, they did plan it out for like 10 years. Like, they knew yep. what was going to happen. And it's like, you can't just be like, yeah. um, I don't know, make the mummy and Dark Universe is going to be amazing. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. It's like you, they have to be patient. They have to be patient. Yeah. But, Brutal. All right. But also anyway. watch it. It's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> I probably will at some point because <laughs> it sounds amazing in the worst possible way. <laughs> oh, yeah. It is It is so steamy. It's like the, the shit steam off it is just like. Oh, my God. It's ripe. <laughs> all all right. right. Well, let's move on to our forced films we're finally getting to these we announced yeah, these like been a while literally, literally last year and um yeah i guess i'll start off with mine yeah do it you gave to me after the storm mm-hmm. a film that i've always wanted to see and uh i really i really liked it man i really like great it. right yeah i my only downside is when i watched it i was a little bit of a sleepy sleepy boy oh yeah and it is Can't. a little bit of a lull it's mm-hmm. i i actually paused it at one point took like a 15 minute nap <laughs> woke up and kept watching it yeah <laughs> nice that's it's like I, I didn't want to f- miss it you know yeah but, yeah um yeah it's it's really it's really good and i can't wait to see what this this uh these guys like other future films like um i still haven't seen the one that came out last year um, shoplifters yeah shoplifters mm-hmm. really want to see that and um i don't know i've realized that i really like japanese films oh, i like yeah. they're japanese incredible. films yeah dude, they're too. so just like i don't know how to really describe them but they're just like they're so delightful you know mm-hmm. and even though this isn't like this isn't a delightful story it's very much like a realistic it's like this torn apart family Mm -hmm. But, like, there's something still charming about it. Oh, absolutely. It's something to do with the culture. You know, it's the Japanese culture. And um, just, like, the dialogue in the movie was really good. Very natural. Mm -hmm. The interactions are very Very, natural. Very real feeling. Yeah. The mother was so realistic. She was Mm -hmm. so good. So good. Like, at one point, she, like, walks by the main character, the son, and just, like, punches him in the gut, like, playfully. It's just, like... That's just like a good little moment, you know, like that's such oh, a totally. great little moment that just like ties into the movie, feels realistic, feels like a real family. Mm-hmm. And um, and the end was good, too. It's like you don't necessarily get like a super happy ending, yeah. but it's like, but it feels, it feels real like, and like it feels closure very real for them, you know? Yeah, there's a little bit of closure. Uh, 
Yeah, it's a really good film. And it doesn't feel like one that's modern. Like, it doesn't feel Absolutely. like it wouldn't be modern, but it is. But, like, it feels like it's from, like, if it just feels like an older Japanese film. And yeah. that makes me excited because I really want to see what else he's done. You know, he's like, got I'm not a, sure. He's got a lot of movies, man. He does. I, I looked up. Good. I looked up his filmography. He's got a lot of films. Um, and in fact, I'm going to look it up right now because I'm not sure if I saw anything else from him. The first one I ever saw was Air Doll, which is about a blow up sex doll that like wakes up and just like is a person. Hmm. I think I've and heard just, of like, that. Wanders one. around, and that is really good. Um, but yeah, he is just. Uh, probably one of my favorite filmmakers recently um i don't know the the direction is so strong like all the performances are so good he has such a very assured style but that is it's like can be invisible you know what i mean because he's just so much experiencing what's happening like i feel a lot of movies i'm watching very analytically the whole time and yeah, there are sure. definitely moments where like things jump out where you're like, wow, like that, you know, but I don't uh-huh. know. He is, I very much get like lost in it because you literally just feel like you're watching someone's life. It's very much like a real feeling, you know? Yeah, totally. And uh, I'm looking at back at this. I haven't seen this other stuff, but I know some of the titles because you've talked about it and you and mm-hmm. Sean have both talked about it. Like our little sister, you guys yeah. love that one. If you, if um, you like the delight factor, our little sister is like the most positive movie I've ever seen. It's amazing. Really? It's so good. <laughs> just the whole time, just like a big ass smile on my face. Like, Oh, this, this is like, everything's going really good. You know? But, yeah. And uh, yeah, definitely want to see Shoplifters. And it looks like he's mm. in post production for his new film coming out this year. Hope I can he's catch a, that one. He's a fucking champ. He came out with well, I guess it was technically one a year in it's one uh, a year Japan, pretty much. But Third Murder came out last year as well, which I actually haven't seen yet. But I have on Blu-ray, and I just haven't watched. Um, yeah, yeah, very cool, man. Um, he's a great filmmaker. He really is. He really is definitely someone to keep your eye on, and uh, th- maybe this will lead. I feel like all these kinds of paths eventually lead to them trying out like their first language, like English language film. Mm-hmm. He might eventually get that. Yeah, I thought. Not that I, not that I necessarily want that. Like I, I it's kind of like the sound of Japanese language too. You know, it's his, uh, it's his new movie. Catherine is it. Gen- Catherine Deneuve, Julia Pinoche, and Ethan Hawke are in his new one. Oh my god. There you go. I knew it was coming. Yep. Guy's a fucking That's incredible. Champ. Yeah. So, a little side note. Ethan Hawke. He's been a fucking champ lately. Yeah, man. He's doing good. He's doing really well. He's picking some great projects. I really need to rewatch First Reformed. I I wanted to do it before the top ten, but I didn't get a chance. And uh, boy, howdy, that's a good one. So he and I had actually I <laughs> I re- I was listening to another podcast and they mentioned twenty nineteen is going to be the year of Ethan Hawke. And oh yeah, it's definitely true. He's got he's got at least four films coming out this year. Damn. And he plays Nikola Tesla in a movie called Tesla, which wow. I didn't know existed. And I love Tesla. So who's doing that? That's incredible. Oh my God. Director Michael Almereda. Okay. He did. I've seen, I am like aware of these movies, but I don't think I've seen any of them. Simple bean sounds familiar. I love the sound of that because I love Tesla. In fact, I've read, several autobiographies on him and nice big fan so anyway that's going way off track but um yeah i really did like i like the movie man and it was great and, and you can watch it it's on amazon so i was able to just oh, watch yeah. that can't wait to see shoplifters still and i think it's... i should be able to at least rent that by this point yeah pretty soon i think uh or maybe yesterday devastating though released on dvd only in the u.s 
Shoplifters? Yeah. God, why? Like, who, who, who watches this movie would buy this on DVD? Like, if you're, this, if you, know, if you just... are looking for this movie, you're not going to buy it on DVD. Like, the <laughs> yeah, kind of person, exactly. The kind of person who's going to watch that doesn't buy DVDs anymore. <laughs> yeah, like, DVDs are fucking old. There's, you're two formats behind. Release it it's on Blu-ray. It's an ancient, it's you an ancient format dick. at this point. It is ridiculously outdated at this point. Yeah, it's fucking stupid. What am I going to watch in SD on my 55-inch 4K TV? You fuck. <laughs> no. I guess I'll have to... That's the same sort of thing that pissed me off about uh, Palo Alto. I know. That movie. Never Cause... released it on Blu-ray. Only DVD. It's like, Hold on. why? Why? Let's see. Let's do a little... Very quick Blu-ray research. I'm going to go all countries on Blu-ray.com. I'm searching shoplifters. All right. We got a UK edition, French edition, Japanese edition. Japanese editions usually do not have subtitles, though. Pick up that UK version. Yeah. I'm seeing if it's region free. It says it's untested. I guess it's not out yet. So, Damn, March 25th? Shit's out on DVD here. Come on, UK, you fuck. All right. <laughs> now, I'm going to search Palo Alto, Blu-ray.com. see what we got. Okay, Palo Alto. We got three editions. We got a French edition. We've got an Australian edition. And we got a German edition. Ooh, German edition? Region A. Region A, B, tested. There you go, bud. All you got to do is import it, Wes. You can have it for only 819 <laughs> euro. That's not bad. You should go region free, bud. Yeah, I know, right? Well, I think I, my player is technically region free. Is it? Xbox. Is that region free? I think so. Not positive. Bud. I know it is for 4K. Because 4K... Oh, okay, it, maybe that's what it is. 4K is a region-free format. So there's no region okay. coding. Gotcha. But Blu-ray, I think it might be locked. I have so, a region-free Blu-ray that I've played before. Oh, yeah? Well, that's yeah. why I was looking, because some of them, even though they're made there, just don't have a code on them. But some of them do. Look into it. Get, go, honestly... If you've been region free this whole time, bud, what are you doing, man? <laughs> Get a couple, uh, got a couple, you know. There are superior uh, editions out there, Wes. Superior editions. Yeah. Absolutely. I just. I know you're you're big into it. You're real big into the uh, region free. Blu-rays. It's, it's just good shit, you know. <laughs> All right. Anyways, let's let's get let's get back. Uh, so yeah, I really did like the film. Thank you for recommending it, and I can't wait to see what else he's he's doing. But um, yeah, I give this uh, four and a half stars. Hell yeah, beautiful. Yeah. I'm glad I recommended you something that you liked this time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's pretty rare that I don't like something. So. <laughs> yeah. But, um, uh, yeah. Bring on the Japanese films, man. I'm, I'm kind of... All right, kinda, let's do it, dude. I'm, like, soaking it in now, you know? All right. Um, uh, but first, let's 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 talk about what you watched. Oh, yeah, you gave me Paddington, which I watched yesterday. Yes. And it was um just a delightful romp. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, a little delightful yeah. romp. Yeah. It, uh, I will say that not necessarily a negative... But I had no idea how big this movie was. Like, I thought that this movie was, like, just, like, a bear hanging out, like, in a house with, like, a family most of the time. And, yeah. like, being goofy. Like, I didn't realize there was, like, Nicole Kidman played, like, a weird taxidermist assassin. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, all yeah, this man. crazy shit was gonna happen. But um, I'm not necessarily against that. I just, like, was not expecting it at all. So I was like, <laughs> whoa, this is crazy. I didn't know she was in the movie either, so that was really weird. But um, Oh, that's cool. 
Yeah, it was good though. It was, I thought it was really fun. Um, definitely, one, definitely a kids movie, and I feel yeah. like that's not necessarily a negative. It's just there. There's like a lot of the like very kid humor in it, and then every now yeah. and again they just like bust out like a real banger. You know what I mean? That's just like really funny. Um, it's very British. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I liked the neighbor character. He was funny. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, also, the main reason I gave you that one is mm. because I wanted you to watch the second one, <laughs> which oh, I yeah. think is actually far superior to the first yeah, one. Yeah, I almost put it on immediately after, but I was like, oh, I, sh- I need to do some meal prep, but... I was like, ooh, maybe I should just watch Paddington 2 right now. But I might watch it tonight, maybe. Dude, I think you'll really like the second one. It has, it almost like borrows a little bit of Wes Anderson's yeah. style a little bit. I can uh, see it, that because I, I got a little bit of that vibe in, in this one. Sure. And it's even more in the second one, but I think it's just, it's it nails it. It kind of knows what it wants to be. And it's just, it's so delightful. It's just absolutely yeah. a delightful little film, and um, it made my wife tear up. Mm-hmm. And I might, uh, I might have welled. A, I might have welled maybe, a little bit. Maybe, maybe well a little bit too on, <laughs> yeah. on the second on the second one. Now I'm t- I'm like, whew, feeling it, and uh, it's great. It's great. In fact, um, there's one character I don't remember his name, so I'm going to look it up if my freaking internet works. Um, you're gonna love this. Hugh Grant's in it, in the second one. uh, Yeah, yeah. But, um, oh, what's his name? What's his name? Is it Brendan Gleeson? Isn't he in it? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Love me some Glee. He's so good in it, dude. He's so good at it. Uh, Yeah, it's it's great. So, I think you'll like it. Yeah, I need to watch it. I did like, um, they got a little Jim Broadbent in there. Which was nice. Thought he was yeah. gonna come back though, and he doesn't. And I was like, "Where's the, get Jim Broadbent in this thing? Like, let's get some <laughs> Jim Broadbent in this thing, you know?" Right. But um, Sally Hawkins. Yeah, she was really good. I thought both the parents were great. I would say my main criticism of the movie is I didn't feel like the kids were like characters in it. They kind of just felt like here's like some That's kids, fair. you know. That's but, fair. Yeah. Um, I mean, it focused on the grownups more, which I think is more important so yeah it makes sense but didn't it make you like want to create like it create um excuse me didn't it make you crave marmalade absolutely yeah in the beginning yeah. when they're just like juicing all of them yeah like, like... all the jars <laughs> it's amazing so good. other question no just <laughs> the <laughs> the the gag where he there's like he throws like 50 jars on that boat <laughs> he like opens his suitcase <laughs> and then there's like 12 jars in there and then he's like gets out and there's like 50 yeah. jars of marmalade <laughs> so yeah. goofy <laughs> so goofy shit like that I got a kick out of and I don't know like how much of an, <laughs> an intentional thing that was <laughs> it's like wait where are all these jars coming from <laughs> he just has so many jars <laughs> yeah. come out of but, nowhere <laughs> yeah it's just like the, the like thing where you like cut and <laughs> you know mask the bottom so you can't tell that they're just pulling it out of a bag it's like endlessly yeah. pulling out jars of marmalade out of this suitcase. <laughs> yeah. But also the gag of keeping one sandwich under your hat, I like a lot. That was good. Yeah, that's good. Mm-hmm. CG's pretty good. Yeah, too. it looks really nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, cool, man. Well, I'm glad you liked it. You know, yeah. it's just a enjoyable film. And but I said, main intention, trying to get you to the to the second one. Yeah, yeah, I, I'll definitely watch it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool, man. So, <laughs> Zach, what are we going to do for our next Force films? You are going to watch Castle in the Sky, the Miyazaki movie. Ooh, love it. Haven't seen that one. It's beautiful. Can't wait to see it. If you're a Miyazaki I'm... boy, I think you're going to like it. That's all I'm gonna say. I like most of his stuff. I'll probably like it. I'm going to give you a film we talked about on the last episode. 
the podcast. I sent you the Blu-ray. You should have it now. Yeah, right? I um, I don't have, have it, it but I checked the tracking number, and it says expected delivery tomorrow. So well, that's that's perfect timing. Yeah, I'll text uh, you confirmation when I receive <laughs> the the Blu-ray screener, and then you know. Perfect, perfect. Um, so that's going to be under the Silver Lake, which is made out made out my top ten of 2018 for our for our top ten episode last episode. And uh, yeah, cool. check it out. We'll do. Can't wait to hear. Can't wait to hear your opinion on it. Hell yeah, yeah. And I can't wait to hear yours about Castle in the Sky. Castle in the Sky. <laughs> the news way. <laughs> Should we convert to read to doing the podcast only in like news cadence? Yes, yeah. Exactly. Before we get to our second review, I'd like to discuss a special deal from our sponsor again. For the listeners of the Listen to Us Rant About Movies podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day free trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service to download your free audiobook today go to audibletrial.com slash l-t-u-r-a-m again that's audibletrial.com slash l-t-u-r-a-m for your free audiobook for your free audiobook fuck (laughs) you almost had it you almost had it god damn it (laughs) You just like sign off. I don't hear from you again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just, <laughs> uh, that was good. That was good. Well, that was uh, perfect timing to use the voice. Yeah. And we're going to go into oh, so our... T- just to be clear, you're dropping the bit. We're not going to do that. You're not going to continue. I was legitimately proposing the whole show continuing in news voice, but seems like you just, you know, dropped right off. Well... Okay then, Zach. I am in on the bit. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> now, dropping it now, we're going to talk about Velvet Buzzsaw. Starting right now. I'm hoping you find something to explain what's happening. Which one's better? One or two? Better or worse, no different. No different. I'm quite curious to know what you think. I think sober hasn't been good for him. Pierce was in the full bloom of alcoholism here. Exactly. Never should have quit drinking. No originality. No courage. My opinion. I can't save you. I found something. Who did these? They're mesmeric. A guy upstairs, he died. And you just took them. He had no family or friends. I can make you rich. Brilliant. The man has people ready to kill. Have you ever heard of an artist named Ventral Deeds? No, not in our records, and we have everyone. The artist used blood to create the reddish black. You ever notice anything about this painting? You look at it long enough, it moves. As I research Deeds, I'm starting to think there's a disgust for the world of money. We spent decades in a psychiatric hospital for the criminally insane. There is some sort of power. Some spirit. It's connected to his art. Something truly goddamn strange is going on! This is a slaughterhouse. Are you aware that Dee's asked that all his art be destroyed? Help! So Velvet Buzzsaw, that was from the trailer of the film by Dan Gilroy, starring Jake Gyllenhaal, Rene Russo, Zal Ashton. And uh, a few others like Tony Collette, John Malkovich. Interesting cast, and uh, it uh, it's it's about okay. Well, here's a description from IMDb. 
After a series of paintings by an unknown artist are discovered, a supernatural force enacts revenge on those who have allowed their greed to get in the way of art. This film is on Netflix, and we are going to be talking spoilers about this film because it's been out a while, and it's kind of hard to talk about without spoiling. Yeah. But um, also, we're somewhat removed. So, Velvet Buzzsaw. What do you think, Zach? Um... Unfortunately, I thought it was kind of a stinker. Um, really wanted to like it, did like it for quite a bit, and then definitely didn't for the rest of it. Uh, yep. What about you? Pretty disappointed in, in the movie. Um, it's a stinker. It's stinky. It's a it's it, it's stinky. It's real stinky. <laughs> I I'm a big fan of Nightcrawler. Love that movie. I fucking love Nightcrawler. It's a, it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, this is not what I wanted at all from them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's pretty stupid. Like, it's dumb. It's, it's very but, dumb. But it's trying to not be dumb. But it's, like, really stupid. <laughs> you know? Like, it, doesn't, it doesn't really know what it wants to be. You yeah. know? Like, it's it's kind of a parody of, about, obviously a parody about the art world, the modern art world. But it's also trying to be a horror movie too, and neither one of those things is effective. And then they blend them, and it's just so you have like this mixture of two things that aren't working, not working together. Yeah. Just the I think the script was horrible. Yeah, I would I would say though that I preferred the art stuff over the horror. Like I thought it was worst when it was a horror movie. Personally, I agree. Um, I thought the first like thirty so minutes. I was like, okay. Like, I didn't love it, but it was like, I can see that this is setting up for something weird. Parts yeah. of this are very funny. Like, the line, the like only memorable thing from this movie is, like, Jake Gyllenhaal, I think he's referencing a couch in some room, and he's just like, oh, it swims in this room. And for some reason, <laughs> I just, like, died laughing. Like, it's so funny. <laughs> like, stuff like that where he's just being, like, a pretentious dick. Oh, was yeah. amazing like him naked on his laptop and then his like boyfriend oh my like, god naked dive like things like that i was into but yeah yeah i don't know i i do think it's very hard to make art in a movie where like everyone looks at it and it's like that is breathtaking but like right it's hard to instill that because you have these people commenting that it's that way but like you obviously have your own perception and not to say those yeah. always have to align but it's like it better be something that's at least impressive to see so i get that it was kind of stacked against them but there's just like no rules in this movie at all like okay so the paintings kill people because this guy right. destroys them but then all art kills people so like right. what like it makes it no sense yeah, the rules that are are never really established, and there's there's no consistency for the message or the the the, the rules that they've like set up for for the yeah. killings or any like it doesn't make sense. Like the main thing is about the paintings from this one artist that they get, and it's like the I guess the intention is they're trying to comment on the selling of modern art, the the profit and the industrialization of that yeah is what is killing them but you've set it up to be these certain paintings and then there's like the one in like the gas station which doesn't make sense yeah it's like what the fuck and is that it's like the okay sphere, the sphere you never see that again the sphere it's a cool idea but doesn't fit into the film at all and no, i would have would i would have liked someone but yeah and like i would have liked to see that actual scene actually played out instead of us seeing like the aftermath mm -hmm. would have been cool but that all aside it's like it doesn't know what it wants to say it's not consistent in like the messages and the rules that it's set up for yeah. this like psychological horror you know yeah it's and then there's like some jokes are really funny, and then there's some jokes that are just like, oh, I fucking get it. Like, where the guy walks into the art studio, and he's like, wow, brilliant stuff. And he's like, that's just a pile of trash. Yeah. They're, like, not open. And it's like, 
Ugh! Just like, know. you know what I mean? Like, it's like I it's fucking get it, it in, you know? like It's hammering it in so hard there, you know? Yeah. So it's just, hard. Parts of this thing are just, like, fucking brutal. and <laughs> It's pretty brutal. I do think Jake Gyllenhaal's good in the movie, but you can also tell, like, he thinks he's in, a, like, a really good movie. Like, he's, like, giving it his all, so it makes it rough, because you're just like, oh, it's uh, so stinky, but, like, everyone's good. They're, like... They made Nightcrawler. Like, this should be good. Like, what is wrong? I know. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, yeah, like you said, he really puts it all into into this role. And I think he's good in it, but it's just, it's not a good script, not a good movie. Yeah. He has nothing to work with. You can tell that he, like, you know, was there, but I don't know. It's just, it's, it's shitty. It's not good. There are a couple things that I actually found funny. Yeah, it's and so. one one of the, one of them that I'll that I can think of right now is um the the young girl like the intern always walking in on the bodies that were killed mm-hmm. or like murdered. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of funny. Like as it keeps happening, it's like that's funny. Mm-hmm. But there were there wasn't a lot that made me like laugh out loud. I was yeah. sort of like, oh, <laughs> I get it. They're commenting on it. Oh, they're they're snooty. I, <laughs> it's funny, but it's like. Okay, I would say yeah, most most of the stuff I laughed at was Jake Gyllenhaal's like stupid like quips about things that didn't matter, like not even about art, but when he's yeah. just like being like a pretentious guy in nor in real life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I also find it funny like he's a critic that's just absolutely ripped. You know? <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> Which doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's 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 fine. It works, I guess. Um, John Malkovich. He's just like in everything now. What the he's fuck like just happened doing with his character? <laughs> he's just doing everything. He's just in this yeah. movie, and then you think he's gonna be this character, <laughs> and then he just drops out of the fucking movie for no reason. And then there's some Shows bullshit the thing on the end where he's like drawing in the sand. It's like, why am I watching this? Who fucking cares? Like this uh, means nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. Well, he's the only one that didn't get killed, so it's like he accepted free art, you know? Like, So it's him. He's making art for himself on the beach, and it's the waves will wash it away, but it doesn't matter because the art is for himself, and it's free-forming art, and it's not being sold. Yeah. It's, you know, that's the whole thing. It's like No, I get it, but it's just like maybe if that character meant anything in the rest of the movie, that would be effective. Yeah. But it's just like he's in it literally enough to make that point, and then... And then to be like, isn't it interesting that, like, people who have a problem, you know, sometimes their art benefits from that. And, like, where's the line there? And it literally asks that question and just goes, that's interesting. Let's not explore that out of the movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. I thought his character was total shit. Did you, not, like, like bad. He wasn't terrible, but it was just, like, what no, what his is, character his character was what bad. is this in this movie this has no place in this movie this is just a movie about artists so you have this art side plot that literally drops out means nothing to any of the characters and then like comes back at the end for some little like uh, statement you know i don't know it just felt really dumb and nightcrawler is so smart that i was like i know why how is this so stupid it's just stupid i know it, it it's very very stupid um it's not a good movie. No, it's bad. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not a good movie. And it sucks because, yeah, like you said, guys from Nightcrawler, great team. A lot of talent behind or in front of the camera and behind it. Maybe and it's like maybe it was all Riz Ahmed. Nightcrawler <laughs> was all Riz Ahmed. He's not he's not involved yeah, in this. It's all him. It was all Riz Ahmed and Bill Paxson. They were the real geniuses behind yep. and in front of the camera. <laughs> and that's why this movie wasn't good. I actually want to rewatch that movie. Oh, it's so good. I have it on Blu-ray. I should rewatch mm-hmm. that. So good. Yeah, it's, it's a fantastic film. It was like just before we made this podcast, it mm-hmm. would have made my top 10 probably that year. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely would have made mine. Um, and let me just say, too, the, the ending, again, with the rules not making sense, these paintings, whatever. Oh. So it, apl- <laughs> it applies to tattoos too, and so uh, her, her 
fucking tattoo. Her velvet buzzsaw so, band name tattoo. <laughs> honestly, rips into her skin. I think the only thing I could describe it is groan inducing. It's like, oh, oh fuck. I know. It's just been like you've been literally fucking me hard with this information the whole movie. It's like anything's fucking art, you know. Like I mean, it's tattoos art. I'm gonna end my movie on that. It's just like, you're, okay. Yes. Sure. You know. It's just like oh. Anything's art. Tattoos are art. Architecture is art. You know. Like oh my god. But I will say like. Going back to the gas station part, that would have been cool if it led to something else. Like if it, if they played off that, but they never, re, they never refer back to it. Yeah, it's dumb. They're just like he must have ran off with the paintings. Well, I guess all those paintings are lost. All that money we would have made. What? It, what are you gonna do? And then it's something that they had, like yeah. had like a secret reserve, and they're like, we'll put it out later because like blah blah blah. It's just like. Because I get what they're doing with that and, like, what the consequences are of that in this, like, setting. But also, like, after that happens, just such an obviously written thing to explain this happening. You know what I mean? Just like, yeah, we had some on the side that were, like, driving off to some weird warehouse, like, really far away, like, in upstate New York, I'm assuming. You know? Like, why would... uh, I don't know. (laughs) It's Honestly, so and I was up on the movie. It's so stupid. Like I was thinking today about it. And I was like, you know what? Maybe it wasn't as bad as I thought. I did enjoy a lot of parts of it. I was really trying to like it, and like some of the stuff was good. And now I'm just thinking about it more. I'm like, no, it wasn't good. It was a fucking dumb movie. It was dumb. Yeah. There are. Th- it's not like absolute shit, but it's pretty bad. It's bad. Yeah. And also, Velvet Buzzsaw being the title is stupid. It is just. Something cool that sounds yeah. good that is linked they literally, to this band. Like... <laughs> and then may it's like the biggest like they might as well have cut to a reverse shot of Renee Rousseau and it zooms in slowly on her face and she turns around and winks. And it just like cuts I, her. I know. It's, like, oh it's the equivalent God. of that. It's basically yeah. the equivalent of that. They literally came up with the name and they're like, It could be your ba- it could be her band name, you know? It's like her band name. But we'll name that the title of the film. And then when we pull Why? this out at the end, Why? it'll just be like a fucking punch. And you'll realize the title of the film and what that implies, you know, by this tattoo killing her because it's art. It's like, oh, my fucking yeah. God. I thought Tony Gilroy was older, not like 16 years old. Like, what <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, I don't know if there's much more no, to say. I'm also getting toasty. It's not as bad as I was saying. I'm just getting amped <laughs> up. Fucking fire it up. <laughs> we are getting we're feeling it we're, we're getting toasty on this one yeah man let's embrace it you know yeah, let's yeah. embrace it <laughs> so what are you gonna rate it uh, i'll give it a two yep that's exactly what i'm thinking two yeah. two stars yeah i think i was one and yep. a half when i watched it but i i eased up a little you know yeah i was going right. back and forth but two all right it's there's you know get some good Good performances, I guess. I yeah. you know what it is. Jake get, Jake Gyllenhaal kind of holds it in for me. Yeah. A little bit I more. guess in general, I just think it would have been better if it wasn't necessarily horror on screen. Like, you could have the storyline where everyone dies. Just every time someone was getting murdered, it was the worst part of the movie. And Yeah, it honestly was. And it's like, I get what they're saying. But, like, is this really, like, what needs skewered? Like, man, everyone just really needs to see, like, just a fucking takedown of the pretentious art world. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> it's like we get it, man. Like, I got it, like, five minutes into the movie. You know what I mean? Like, I don't need to... Yeah. It's honestly, like, a, it's an amateur filmmaker idea yeah. pulled off, like, with a Netflix budget. Mm-hmm. It really, you know what I mean? Like... It's such like a, it's it's like a minor idea that you'd like have a flash like oh that'd be interesting, and yeah. someone took that, oh that'd be interesting idea and flushed it out into a film and it's like maybe you shouldn't have done that, yeah just maybe you shouldn't have made this a movie. It know. also just seems like every kill is like inspired by like a Tumblr post of like a woman Ugh. covered in like paint like colors you know or like 
weird like hands coming out over the frames of the art it's just like okay i fucking get it dude whatever Ugh. yeah anyways moving on we didn't we we did not like velvet buzzsaw clearly no sir um but we're gonna move on to a filmmaker that has a lot more um how should i say experience or yeah. good movies under his belt yeah guy who's yeah. like kind of a champion better, you know better track record <laughs> yeah. yeah we're gonna be talking spoilers for high flying bird starting right now you want to get back on the court and that's your agent i want to get you there but we are in a lockout there are no actual games to watch. You think these fools, these rich white dudes, gonna let these sexiest sport fall by the wayside? This team's my family. I need us to be one big family again. Football is fun, but it don't sell sneakers. To move merch and inspire rap lyrics, they need your services. The NBA won control of a game that we played. We played better. They invented a game on top of a game. I can see a whole infrastructure that put the control back in the hands of those behind the ball. What you gonna do? But I'm about to pull up a chair. My God ain't right. We're at the height of the information era. We need a story. What are you doing, man? This is my career. You have a chance, sir, to do what has never been done before. Come on, man. Give him the rock. I don't want to do that. This is the matchup everyone's been dying to see. We may not die. 24 million people saw a video. You're not thinking of breaking up our happy marriage. What you saw yesterday was just the beginning. Oh, man, this is getting crazy. Of what could be a whole new industry. He's up to something. You did all that? You know the lead would have blackballed me. You scared? We don't need the lead. We are disruptors. It's your game now. You were born for way more than this. Okay, so that was from the trailer of the new film by Steven Soderbergh. High Flying Bird, another Netflix film showing right now. You can watch this movie right now. <laughs> um, pretty incredible. But um, Zach, what you what'd you think of this film? I liked it. Um, I will say I was a little disappointed, but... I still shocked thought I would say that. What's that? I'm I'm actually shocked to hear you say that. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, I thought it was really interesting. Um, I like what it was trying to do, and I thought all the performances were good. I thought it looked really good. Um, I know he was definitely going for a grittier look on Unsane, but like comparison in terms of an iPhone movie, I thought this looked like very good. Um. Really? For being an I iPhone didn't see movie? It. I mean, you could tell it's on an iPhone. I don't know. I thought it looked way better than Unsane. But see, I didn't see Unsane, so. Oh. I think there are, there are at times angles where it was, like, very telling, but you didn't think it looked good? Uh, parts looked good, but anything that's in low light definitely looked like a iPhone to me. I thought, I thought it was, like, a pretty, like, decent-looking movie. Dis- disagree I, I i disagree with you i mean the, the cinematography is there but the look the camera just get just get a better camera you know just get a better camera because you can tell it's on an iphone in my opinion i honestly completely forgot that it was on an iphone probably like 20 minutes in the movie I just like watched it i found it distracting interesting <laughs> yeah right. but um sorry was there anything else that you wanted to say um more so that i i think it it is in line with some of the other movies he's made you know just kind of like looking at a very specific like piece of culture and kind of like seeing you know what in it is problematic and what in it can be changed and what what's happening there uncovering something that everyone thinks is familiar but actually there's like different stuff going on and um, I think it makes a lot of interesting points, um, hmm. but 
I didn't, uh, I thought there were maybe some issues, like, pacing. It felt like it was a very snappy script, and that he, I feel like he has also done things that are very, like, snappy and fast, and I felt yeah. like there was, there was a lull where it felt like the editing didn't match the script, where it kind of dropped off a little for me. Yeah, the editing isn't as flashy as his style usually calls for, mm-hmm. I thought. Um, but let me let me first start off by saying, um, overall, I thought the film was pretty good. Um, I I don't think the subject the subject was very interesting to me, but because it's Steven Soderbergh, he can make anything interesting, you know. And I felt like he he made this this concept and this subject interesting, despite me not really having an interest in basketball or in the yeah, NBA. Yeah. So just to clarify, you're saying the movie was but going in you didn't you weren't like intrigued yeah like the the subject in general does not interest yeah me, i'd agree yeah, yeah but he obviously i wanted to watch it because it's it's him mm-hmm. and he made it interesting and the yeah. actors made it interesting um and i thought the script is very well written definitely i thought very good snappy dialogue very definitely his sensibilities you know, like it felt mm-hmm. like a, it felt like a Soderbergh film totally and um I like that I like that aspect of it but yeah like what I was saying earlier I I think the the camera for me was just too distracting there were there were shots that were was like wow that looks that looks good that looks good but there are other shots that were like that's clearly on on like a stand holding an iPhone, especially like the uh, tracking shots, like outside downtown, like following him. Um, you could tell it was stabilized. Like I, that's like my editing mm-hmm. uh, experience coming out. Like it's fine. It's not n- no normal person would even notice that or yeah. be bothered by it, but it's because I know. No, I, I, I get you. You know what I mean? And I feel like he, can do better but i do give him respect because he tries something new he's making the iphone cinematography work and and i respect it and it's like it also makes me go like well shit you know what the fuck am i doing i have i have an iphone you know what i mean like yeah and he didn't (laughs) use like anything that crazy he used like an osmo and yeah the the film pro app that's like about it i think so it's like it's because a lot of these movies like Tangerine is a fantastic movie shot on an iPhone, but was using like thousand dollar lens attachments and like crazy rigs right. and you know what I mean? Like yeah. external hard drives that are like capturing the footage at like a higher bit. You know what I mean? So yeah, for sure. I, I do think there is something to using it in a very stripped down, um, accessible way. Yeah. Um, I, I guess, you know, that's it. That comes down to taste. And in the end, for me, I, that's just not my taste. I don't like the, I don't like the look of it. Um, especially like even the opening scene, like the blown out, the really blown out, uh, windows and just like, it's, it's not a cinema camera, you know? So you're not going to get yeah. really fantastic shots at the same time. What I'm trying to, what I'm trying to lead into is I think if there's a movie to be shot on iPhone, it's this movie because it kind of ties it in near the end. Mm-hmm. Like there's people like using their phones, uh, yeah, yeah. At, you know, at that one particular scene. I'm t- mm-hmm. well, we're, we're talking spoilers, right? Yeah. The, the scene where there's like the, the shootout out duel. Yeah. Yeah. Between the two players or whatever. That, that, at that moment I was like, okay, it makes sense in this story to use an iPhone. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm starting to lo- losing my, uh, train of thought here, but yeah, I, I just not a fan of the look overall, but I did think that it was a pretty, pretty good film overall. Mm-hmm. Do you, just a question, and I'm not saying you yeah. would like it any less or think it's better, but do you think you would have been as aware of that if when you saw you didn't know it was shot on an iPhone or do you think watching it with that in mind made the like seams show more 
I think maybe it's a little bit of both. I did know it was on an iPhone, but I had kind of forgotten going into it. I didn't go into it going like, this movie was shot on an iPhone. Yeah, yeah. I actually, I actually forgot that it was, and then I just I started to notice the look of it, and I was mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, this was shot on an iPhone. Makes sense. And then it was on my mind the whole time. Yeah. So it was sort of both. Um, I don't think someone who doesn't deal with film or is even like someone who watches a lot of movies would even notice that or care. Yeah. I think it's totally fine for what it is doing. But as someone who watches a lot of movies and is an editor, I noticed it and it, it was distracting for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I overall just don't like the look of uh, yeah, an iPhone. Yeah, and that's I, fair. Yeah. I, I, it's a great tool if you have it, but it's like you're Steven Soderbergh. You can get any camera in the world. Um, make this film look better. I don't know because you can easily do it. Just get like a nice camera with a nice lens, and I, it'll, on a, it'll really drastically improve the production value for me. I agree with you that a red would definitely look better. But I do think there's something to be said about workflow and the fact that he probably and has said that he could not have made this movie not on an iPhone just because of the speed. I don't know if I believe that. I definitely I believe that. 100%. I mean, I believe the speed is much faster, obviously, but I don't think that he couldn't have made it. He could still make it with another camera. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, speed is directly correlated to budget like i mean if you're taking longer to do like the setups every day he said he could do a setup in five minutes and it's like with a red yeah there's no fucking way you're doing a setup in five minutes you know what i mean so well, he doesn't even need to use a red i'm not even like pushing a red well i mean that that's that's what he uses though like he has his own personal red so like if he didn't shoot it on an iphone he probably would have shot it on a red is what i'm saying all right well Get a DSLR, get, you know, get a, get a freaking A7S, Sony A7S, you know, it's like, that'll look better. Yeah. I don't know. And th- th- that, that would take just as long to set up, in my opinion. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I, I do think it's interesting, personally. And honestly, I, like I said, I, I forgot that it was on an iPhone. And I also agree, though, that I was very aware of, like, the stabilizers and stuff like that. But yeah. at the same time, I've been noticing personally, I feel like it's the it's the same as if we were in like the the seventies or eighties and you were like a dolly grip for your job. Cause like I go back and I watch older movies and those aren't perfect. Like in a there in a Stanley Kubrick movie, a dolly won't be perfect. It'll stop, it'll adjust, you know what I mean? It's not a consistent speed and and it's not like I'm I'm faulting that for it and I'm not faulting this for it. And I know you weren't saying you were either, but it's just like I think there's there's like a reverence to to older things where the seams are like allowed to show more, where I think there's like less of an excuse or people think there's less of an excuse now, when in reality I don't I don't know like what the disparity is there. Does that make sense? So, well, kind of. What's the what's kind of the point you're you're trying to make? I don't know. I guess, and I'm not, I'm not saying. I guess uh, this is also reflecting a conversation I had with someone after I watched it. Not necessarily exactly what you're saying, but I I was talking to him and he was just like very anti it being on iPhone. Like I think it's stupid. Like why is it shot on iPhone? It's fucking dumb, you know. But it's like, oh, I I hated that I could see that it was a stabilizer, but. Like, you watch movies that you revere as masterpieces, and, like, technically, they're not perfect either. Like, if I was shooting a shot, and I did a tilt, if I was doing, like, takes of a shot, and I did a tilt, and I tilted too high and then tilted back down, I would be like, oh, fuck, that's ruined. Gotta do it again. You know what I mean? But, like, that happens in so many movies, and you just don't look at it that way. You know what I mean? I I, I see your point, but... Here's where I'll counter that. We're not shooting on film anymore. You, you, we have the capabilities where it's so easy to make your film look really good with a digital camera. It's not. It's not that hard. And I understand maybe budget constraints or whatever. 
Again, this is Steven Soderbergh. I'm sure he can make it work. And there are very simple, cheap options that you can use that your film can look literally 10 times better with just a little bit more budget. I guess I just disagree that it would look 10 times better as shot on like an A7S. I think it would look okay. better, but not 10 times better. I think... I mean, I could I, be exaggerating, but I I mean, I just think it's a lot easier to make it look better. I Yeah, I mean, I definitely I agree. It's The tools are more at our disposal now, so it's definitely a lot yeah. easier to look better. I guess it's... um. I don't know. I think it, I think part of it's like a trade thing. You know what I mean? Like w- what I was saying, it's like if you were a dolly grip, then you would be thinking the same thing. Like, oh, whoever did this, that's garbage. You know what I mean? Like, what are you doing, guy? So like, well, yeah, you should be you should you know, you got guys there that you could be giving jobs to sort of thing where like this is what they this is what they do. They operate this camera on an iPhone. It's like, I don't know. I get, I, I don't know. I guess also it's like, what's the difference in a stabilizer? If you had an A7S II, you would literally be using the same one. You know what I mean? Yeah, but the stabilizer, I don't know. This doesn't, I don't know what they used exactly. I don't an like Osmo, know their equipment. DJ, DJI Osmo. They definitely use, they use a yeah. DJI Osmo? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um... So it wasn't just shot on iPhone then. Well, obviously it wasn't just shot on an iPhone. I brought I brought I that up that when was, I said I thought, earlier that they use this was, yeah, but an Osmo is like not that expensive, and an Osmo isn't optical. I know it's not compared compared to other cameras. No, it's not very expensive. But no, I didn't, no, I didn't no, 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 no. The Osmo, the handle, not the camera, the handle. Oh, okay. The Osmo is the ha- the stabilizer gimbal not the camera but it has its own it has its own it has its own camera as well doesn't it? yeah well no the camera is for the drone and you can take the camera off the drone and put it on that's like a different thing the osmo in a sense okay. of they use the osmo as the stabilizer so it has a bracket that you put the i got gotcha. you and what my point was that if you were shooting on an a7s you would probably use the same thing with a different bracket was what i was saying yeah okay i mean Whatever, we're kind of arguing over logistics, but like, uh, I don't know. I guess we just fundamentally disagree. Yeah. Like, I, I think there's of, value. Of the look of the... Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, to cut you off. No, go ahead. I just think there's value in the statement of making a movie on an iPhone. And I think that he's not going to do it for every one of his movies. Like, he's shooting one now that's on a red. So, like, I don't think it needs, every movie needs to be shot on an iPhone, but I do think there's value in doing it. I guess. No, and um, I will say I res- I respect the decision, and I I respect Soderbergh for ch- always trying to push the envelope, mm-hmm. challenging himself, challenging the medium, and also um just trying new things all the time. I I get that, totally respect it. I just uh, I just fundamentally don't like the look of the iPhone, you know. Fair so enough. that's just where I fall, you know. Um, but the uh, the idea behind it takes it takes a lot of uh, the guts to like make your film on that, and to take it even further, I think that they use it very creatively. Yeah, I think the the the, the cinematography is very creative. There's a Although lot of I angles am, that you couldn't get with something that that yeah that small, absolutely, you know? and so they they take that and they run with it and. They could just do wide shots or what you know, just like mm-hmm. push in um, for like a medium. But they totally tried different angles and stuff. That I really liked. I I really respected that. And like you said, you couldn't do that with another camera, which is very interesting. Um, although I do think, I think overall the first scene, mm-hmm. this scene stood out to me. The scene, the first scene between the two. Great scene. Great. The scene is very well written, very well directed, but I I thought the cutting to the different angles was a tad too much. They were going all around. They're they're it's they're going they're they're crossing the line, they're they're like flipping around like yeah. It, it was just a tiny little step too much. But I, 
for me, I think it would have worked better if the movie had like followed through on that more. Like I feel like that that scene sure. and then that the sequence of him walking to that song really got me into this kind of like like one after oh, the I, other kind of like movie. I was digging pace, it. You know, I was digging it at that, that point. Yeah, that like once it hit like forty five minutes an hour, it was like okay, it's kind of chugging. Like we're losing it yeah. a little bit, you know. And yeah, I think if it yeah. would have kept up with that more, that would have worked better for me. But I, I mm-hmm. definitely see where you're coming from with that. Yeah. No, it definitely would. It would if they had ramped that back up into the editing. Uh-huh. Um, they needed a moment there to sort of just like kind of ramp it back up. I think. Um, it was starting to definitely lull near like the three quarters on. Um. But yeah, the acting was very good. The script was very good. Very creative cinematography, and I think overall it's just very interesting that you can have you have a, a Soderbergh film on Netflix right now. You can you can go watch. Yeah. So, um, it's definitely worth watching. Definitely worth checking out. It's a good and, uh, filmography movie. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, not one of yeah. his best, but it's like nice one to slip in there. Yeah, and he's he's a champ. He's an uh, he's an incredible director. He really is, and. Um, I'm glad he's just like not retired and yeah. <laughs> just just uh making content, man. Slamming totally. content. It's amazing. And trying all kinds of new things. We got another yeah. movie coming out later this year on Netflix. Yeah, oh, what um what is that? The Laundromat has Meryl Streep in it apparently. Oh, incredible. I haven't heard of that one. Coming out later That's this year. Great. Fucking champ, dude, releasing two movies a year fucking retiring my ass <laughs> <laughs> i know it's hysterical <laughs> uh that's awesome man well that's so cool what an interesting person what an interesting yeah. director um yeah anything else you want to say about it what else have we even talked about um in the film i don't know i thought all the performances were good i liked zazie beats i liked whoever played She's the, great. the main uh, like player i thought he was good um yeah, he was the scene good. where kyle mclaughlin shoots a snot rocket was amazing oh kyle mclaughlin we didn't talk about <laughs> yeah. him yet that's yeah, yeah. so good yeah it was really good when i saw him i didn't know he was in the movie oh yeah at all no i, I had no idea and so he he walked in i was like that's amazing <laughs> totally. and also um i don't know the actress's name but kima greggs from the wire love her okay she was the nice. the guy like avoiding kyle mclaughlin or whatever do you ever watch the wire yeah yeah, yeah she, no i never I she is never watched it she's fantastic on that show and i literally don't see her in anything and it's amazing to see her in something because i really loved her cool uh zachary quinto yeah he was, was another, in a, he was in it briefly that was a surprise yeah, that was yeah. A surprise a little quinto pop in yeah that was good um, yeah i liked it and uh, this is a big thing what do you think about almost like the meta commentary of of the Netflix thing, like getting the Netflix yeah. deal? Yeah, I, I thought that was. I, I, I was like, when that moment happened, I wish they almost pushed it a little further because uh, I was like, ooh, almost brought in. I don't know. It almost brought in like a whole other like, layer like, to it. Yeah, a whole other layer to it. I mm. thought that would have been really cool if they just like went with that and like gone way left field and into that direction i would have probably liked the movie even more yeah um, it was good yeah but that was really good and definitely the the main actor andre holland he was he's great and yeah i, I really miss the nick oh i miss it too there was there's a a stirring that he might be trying to uh get season three going andre holland because he he started this project apparently this like was like his idea oh, cool. to make so he's been trying to like produce more and and do stuff and i read something. is he an actual producer on this film i believe so yeah he that's cool it was his idea and he he was really good friends with the writer um who i forget his name but he wrote moonlight and they had yep. done theater together so he like got the script and then he brought he like got steven soderbergh or whatever which is really cool um but yeah i fucking love yeah. him he is the best he's such a good actor he's a great actor and yeah he is an executive producer that's yeah. great so that's really cool 
while I would love to see season three of the Nick, if they ain't no Stevie, I'm out. I'm out. I ain't watching no and no Stevie. I really, Nick. I really doubt it would be the season three that was foretold to oh, our yeah. friend Sean. I know. <laughs> no way. There's no way. <laughs> yeah. It would be that. Oh, that's funny. I just want to see sci-fi um, Nick so bad. <laughs> Nick in the future is literally the best idea I've ever heard. <laughs> and I want it to happen so bad, and it won't. Do we, do we want to just, like, tell that story real quick? Well, basically, Steven Soderbergh uh, was at a bar in Chicago, and Sean, who was on the cast before... Um, Sean is... Uh, he's been on the show before. He's one of our Patreon supporters. Yeah, yeah. He was at this bar and called me and was like, Zach... What the fuck are you doing? I'm talking to Steven Soderbergh right now. Get over here. <laughs> and I was like, I literally thought he was like joking at first. Cause I'm like sitting in my basement playing synth. I was like, yeah, I got some new pedals. I'll probably just fuck with those. You know, he's like, I am <laughs> literally talking to Steven Soderbergh. So I went over there and they had stopped talking by the time I got there. And so I had like walked up and talked to him and stuff. But uh, basically he told Sean that the Nick was originally going to be, or like, I don't think originally, but after it ended, he had the idea to bring it back as a six season arc where there's the first six two seasons se- or si- yeah, I believe so. Six, six season or six episodes, six season. So wow. First two seasons are what happened. Okay. And then second two seasons go to, I believe like the fifties, fifties, right. Nick. Okay. And it's in yeah. black and white. And then the last two seasons are in the future, which future, is right. the best idea I've ever heard. It is so <laughs> fucking good. I can't believe it, and I want to see it right now. That'd be incredible. That yeah. would be incredible. So that's not going to happen. We no. <laughs> we got the first two seasons, and I would just be happy with the third season of regular, Yeah, you know. Only next. if Stevie's <laughs> involved. No Stevie. No Nick! I'm out! <laughs> yeah no definitely definitely gotta have stevie involved to do all the show of it. is amazing that's one of my favorite shows of all time dude it's one of the best i'd say i'd say it's right 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 behind sopranos for me which is number one i still gotta I, is it really number one for you it, i think of it's all time definitely the best show i've watched of all time probably yeah i don't know what's wow. better wow what's your number i mean one? i i haven't seen soprano so yeah. i what's your number I, one i've though? always wanted to of all time like my favorite show of all yeah, time favorite show of all time <sighs> that's really hard man i don't even know where to begin come on pop a couple out give me top three free shows don't think about it too much i think definitely in the top five rest of development yeah it's one of my favorite shows show. of all time love that show mm-hmm uh, probably somewhere in there. I'm a big fan of Game of Thrones. I think Game of Thrones For is sure. a fantastic show. Mm-hmm. The Nick, it's in the top three. Definitely in the top three. It's a crystal clear baby. Breaking Bad's in there mm-hmm. as well. <sighs> what else? Got what a, else? Got that's quick, all that's coming to mind right now. Quick question. For yeah. your forced watch, can I do the entirety of The Sopranos? <laughs> <laughs> You don't have to watch it before the next show, but like maybe like in three shows. <laughs> Just watch all. How many, se- seven. How many seasons are there? Six. There's seven. Well, there's six, but six is A and B, and part A is twelve episodes, and part B is eight episodes. So it's fucking two seasons. I hate that shit. Uh, there's also yeah, yeah. like a year between them. And the characters change, and there's a huge time gap. It's two seasons. Like, what are you talking about? But yeah. um, yeah. So there's <laughs> so there's six, technically seven seasons. I'm about to. I've been rewatching it with uh, Casty, my girlfriend. So we're like, yeah. I think we got four left, and we're gonna when the last one air when we watch the last one, we're gonna make like a big Italian dinner and have a bunch of people come over. Incredible! <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be good. It's so good. It is yeah, the best I've heard show it's, ever. It's so. I good. mean, I've heard it's pretty amazing. I, I, I have HBO. It's right there. I should it's just right watch there, it. man. After this is over, go and pop on a Sopranos. You know, 
Yeah, pop up on one episode. It is yeah. unbelievable. It's not to get too into Sopranos in the middle of this high flying bird review. <laughs> but, yeah. but it's it's like it it is what you want it to be. You know what I mean? It's like it is just like a fun gangster thing. And mm. it explores interesting ideas. All the characters are really good and feel real. And it's also just so fucking weird. It is such a weird show. The really? things happen that I, that are really surreal, strange things. There's tons of like weird dream sequences and whole episodes that feel very strange and like all this unexpected events that just like happen and change everything it's really crazy it's super good wow i didn't expect that element oh yeah no it's really weird man it's a very weird show that somehow is just like everyone watches it and just like all right cool it's like it's very strange (laughs) (laughs) like i don't i don't get how it got away with a lot of it like there's there's whole episodes where it's like weird dream sequences. It's so weird. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> like, is it is there like a sci-fi element to it or something? No, or no, like, not nothing like that. But just like, just like I don't time know. Time things. It, it's just... a lot of him because I don't know if you know, but like he goes to a psychiatrist and it's like a big. I really deal don't know like, much about it. For like a mobster, he he goes to a psychiatrist, and a lot of the earlier okay. seasons are very much based around what he talks about in those meetings versus like what's happening in his life and how that correlates. And so there's a lot of just like weird segments that have this like off meaning that isn't like super apparent and like weird offshoot Hmm. storylines that like go places that you're like, where is this going? I don't know what's going on here. I don't know. You just got to watch it. It's fucking amazing. Yeah. Does it feel like a, like a classic HBO show? Absolutely. Well, it's like the pioneer HBO show. It's like what's right. It's yeah. like what started like, like good cable cinematic TV. You sure, know? yeah. It's like the ultimate HBO show. Mm-hmm. Really, it's honestly. Will you at least watch like two episodes of Sopranos before the next one? Just like tell me what you think. I can definitely do that. Just watch two. I, I can definitely do that. Right. That's that's not too hard. Okay. All right. I'm excited actually. It's so good. You're gonna love it, man. It's amazing. You're in for I think- a delightful treat. I've held off because uh, I've I've tried to bring it up to the wife. She she Emily she won't she won't watch it with me. Yeah, like she won't watch it. Does she not and like I, I don't gangster stuff I don't or think violence she, or something or I think I don't think she understands what it is. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I think she just like oh it's like a gangster thing or whatever. I don't want I don't want to watch it. I don't want to watch it. Mm-hmm. But it's like I think I don't know. I'm just, I'm just gonna watch it. I'm just gonna do it. Yeah, it's like if if in Goodfellas. Instead of Ray Liotta going home and like being on coke and going crazy, he like went home and like ate ice cream and watched TV. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah. That's incredible. It's really good. Oh, so good. And I know it's like it was such a sensation back in the day. Yeah. As well. Rightfully so. It's a fucking banger. Now that we've just <laughs> <laughs> divulged all of <laughs> yeah it's got on a, a good solid 10 minute rant about the sopranos, sopranos. yeah <laughs> <laughs> um i think we're pretty much done with the episode as well as our discussion on high flying bird but like i guess let's let's give it a rating what do you think what, what do you give i'll it? give it um a light four yeah yeah that's where i'm at like very, I, I give it, very hard three five, like four. Well, definitely, that's actually exactly where I fall. I give it four. Nice. I give it four. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but here's the thing I was gonna say earlier. It's like, it's not a movie like, oh, dude, let's just pop on High Flying Bird. <laughs> like, yeah, totally. It's like I don't I'm know never gonna I'll... watch it. Yeah, I'll never watch it again. I will never watch it. I'll probably watch it again in like three years when I'm like, ooh, Soderbergh is good, dude. Um, (laughs) If I'm ever like on like a a marathon, you know, sure. But I don't see myself seeing it again. I think for me, it's it's interesting. And I think, I guess one last thought about Soderbergh in general is when when someone's output is this high, I think I'm easier on the fallback so like you're allowed to to strike out more if you're coming out with two movies a year you know what i mean it's it's like if you're paul thomas anderson 
and you come out with one movie every three years, that better be fucking good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and if it's yeah. not, I'm gonna be devastated. But Steven Soderbergh, <laughs> he's coming out with two movies a year. So it's like if one yeah. of the movies isn't the best, it's it, it's at least still doing something. You know what I mean? It's like he's always at something and he always has an angle. So I think that makes yeah. all his work interesting because it's like, yeah, I don't think High Flying Bird's going to go down as like, man, 2019, High Flying Bird, you know? But <laughs> but like in in a the filmography of Soderbergh, it's it's an interesting um addition and I think I I think I'm able to look at the positives more because this isn't like his one thing that he's coming out with. It's it's like a it's like a nice little ditty, you know. No. Oh, no, very well said and I think it's not like it's not like Coen Brothers coming out with Buster Scruggs. Mhm. To me that was disappointing because it's like this is yeah. the Coen Brothers movie I get, you know? It's like Yeah, it's like guess I'll wait 2 years and watch the next yeah. one. It's kind of a bummer. Sure, it's not it, it's not horrible, but it's 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 not even nearly bad, but it's like yeah, it's not, definitely good. Not, <laughs> it's no, no, it's good, but yeah, it's like yeah. not like it's yeah. not No Country for Old Men yeah, or anything. It's not Lewin you know? Davis. It's not a serious <laughs> yeah, man. Not, right. So anyway, um, that's a good place to end it. So as always, you can find other episodes of this podcast on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, and YouTube. Go ahead, give us a follow us. Uh, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. If you enjoy the show, consider leaving a review on iTunes. Every rating helps us bring more listeners. You can also email us at listen to us rant about movies at gmail.com. Thank you to our Patreon producer, Sean Pierce, and our other Patreon supporters. You too can be a producer and or supporter of this podcast by visiting by visiting our Patreon page and becoming a monthly patron for as little as a dollar. Visit www.patreon.com slash L-T-U-R-A-M podcast. Just want to give a quick disclaimer here that I apologize for all the snacks. Just realized I've been doing that this whole cast from this Have very, you been smacking? This very tart oh. beer is like making me <laughs> smack. And then I just did it and was like, listen to it. And it's just like, just want to give a quick disclaimer that I'm very toasty from this tart beer and there's probably smacks abound in this thing. So I've got a good Apologies I've got a snacks. good mouth, but not right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> Alright, Zach, till next time. Bud. Till next time.